at this stage, it's inevitable that we that we get to a point where we can create some kind of simulation where the people in the simulation actually believe they're real. Like the hmm. AI characters actually believe they're real. And we've kind of already seen this where there's a clip out there of some guy trying out some new game and in the engine, they've got the NPCs programmed with artificial intelligence and their responses and they've got voice so they can speak. They've given them the engines to be able to speak. So there's a guy walking up to this character on the street and, and like they can only go so far. There's like invisible walls, like in the matrix basically. And as they walk up to these walls and they're like hitting the walls, this guy's walking up to the guy. He goes, he goes, you know, you're not real, right? Like you're not, you're not human. And like, you can literally like hear the dialogue take place of this NPC having like an existential crisis. And there is even one where like this one NPC swears, he keeps saying he's got to get back to his family. We've been utterly lied to about our history and our origins through scientism. And um, our timeline is completely messed up. We have no idea who we are or when we are. And we don't, we barely even understand where we are considering all the deceptions around you know, the heliocentric model and the rest. Well, the real danger is the fact that we are heading toward a post-human apocalypse. There may be a connection between modern day abductions and the ancient tale of the Nephilim. If we don't understand the Genesis 315 narrative, the Messiah will crush your head, you will bruise his heel. That is the gateway to the entire rest of the biblical prophetic narrative. Pergamum. They're in the city where Satan's throne is. Satan is the Prince of Rome. The Prince of Rome is Jupiter. The Prince of Rome is Zeus, because Satan is Zeus. The end game, which is Armageddon, is going to be the emergence of a new golden age in which the gods walk openly among mankind as they did in the world before the flood of Noah. And there's no stopping it. It will happen. What's up, everyone? We'd like to welcome you to another episode of Question the Narrative. I have my co-host, Shane, with me today, and we also have Aaron from Tune Thy Heart, a very special guest. We're going to talk about a very interesting topic today. We are all very excited to bring this information to you guys. So what's up, Aaron? How you doing, buddy? What's up, Ricardo? Good to, How you doing? Good to hang out with you again, share some electronic space with you as oh, always yeah. Shane <laughs> what's up as well good, good to be here man. You, thanks for having me yeah man thanks for coming on we really appreciate it of course so um tell us about the simulation theory well okay. tell us about yourself first sorry yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler spoiler alert <laughs> yeah not to get ahead or anything yeah, um my bad not much to say i'll keep it really simple because i really don't like talking about myself more than i have to so uh, music is my thing. It's always been my passion. Um, I, I've always been, since a little kid, uh, having a near-death experience at five years old, I've kind of always questioned the narrative. And I've literally, I mean, um, always, I've just always seen things uh, deeper than what they really are. Um, I've had no control over it or no choice. And I used to, I used to see it as a, a, a negative, but the older I get, the more I see that it's actually been a blessing because it's kept me out of a, a lot of situations. But that all being said, uh, I now am only focusing on making music for the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit infused 40 through, 432 hertz um, synthwave music is what I've been focusing on. That's just kind of what I'm focusing on right now. I'm in the middle of making an EP, and it's going to be very different in the sense that um, it's not about making hit singles. It's kind of like a journey. So it's going to be about seven songs and it's meant to be listened to in one listen from start to finish. And so there's going to be music tying each track together. It'll, it'll be like one listening experience from start to finish. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to be calling it um, the story of my salvation, but I'm just going to say SOS on it. And it's going to basically walk people through my my personal journey and i think it's going to be really relatable because from the people that i talk to it's not too dissimilar from a lot of people so going from confusion and pain and darkness uh stepping into the the full authority and love of jesus um and then the last you know the last couple of songs will be 
basically like straight up praise songs, but in in my own way, I guess, so to speak. So that's what I'm focusing on. That's what I'm doing. And um, that's what I guess people can expect to see from me in the future. And a little burnt out on social media right now. So I'm really only posting when the Holy Spirit leads um, or coming on podcasts with my friends to talk about you know, some of the, the fun things to talk about. It gives me a nice outlet since I don't talk about these things on my own channels anymore. So yeah, sure. that's, um, that's a little, little nutshell. Yeah. Um, just real quick for, for our listeners, um, what platforms are you on? I know you're on TikTok. Um, just so everyone knows, you know, where to find you and where to, uh, you know, check out your content at. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm on TikTok is my third account. So it's, mm. uh, if you, there should only be one for me, but I, I'm only at like a, I shouldn't say only that's horrible. I have about 1700 followers right now. And, and so when you see one with about that many followers, that's me. So, okay. and then, and then I'm also on, um, YouTube and you, so YouTube and Instagram reluctantly, um, uh, JT pushed me towards getting Instagram to diversify. So I did it kind of as a placeholder. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, so I'm on, I'm on those as well. And then of course, musically speaking, I'm on every, like all music platforms just under two and I heart. And those links are usually in all of my socials. So. Yeah. And you, you got banned uh, this last time on TikTok at like 260,000 followers or something, wasn't it? So you my were way first up there. Yeah, my first account got banned at 265, and then my second account got banned at 140, or 145, oh, okay. or something That's like that. That's a bummer, that. so, man. Well, what's crazy about the second time is that, like, the first time I kind of knew, I kind of knew it was coming, right? Like, I kind of saw the writing on the wall. Like, I had been pushing the, the boundaries for a minute, and um, I'll also admit that I was, I was doing some pretty heavy fear-mongering around that time. I didn't, I didn't think I was but I definitely was. And so, um, yeah, that account, that account got zapped at like 265. I had plenty of warnings, but my second account, what's odd is I didn't have one violation. Oh. I didn't have one single violation like at all. So there was no warnings. There was no like heads up. It was just boom. One day I woke up and it was gone. But the ironic part about it all is that, and I'm not kidding. Um, I, I pray for his direction every day, right? Like that's part of my prayer. When I wake up, I pray for him to show me my path and, you know, and show me my direction and so that I can step into it and recognize it when I see it. And, but there's been two times in the last, like maybe year, year and a half where like, I fervently prayed that like with a little extra emotion, you know, like, a, like a little more desperation because I felt lost in terms of where exactly he wanted me. And I'm, I'm not kidding at all. Both of those times that I prayed with that level of desperation, that same day, my account got banned. Wow. So, uh, I still don't really fully know what to do with that information. Other than the fact that like, he was at the very least trying to tell me that I didn't need that. I didn't, I, or I shouldn't be there or I'm not really sure. Um, I I'd like to think maybe it was just a course correction kind of thing. But anyways, yeah. Okay. Well, definitely, definitely could have been that. Um, it's hard to say really, but it's odd that, Who knows? you know, you, you prayed that prayer and then the, you know, that very day that happens. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm in a place now, I'm in a place now where I'm just like, I'm, I'm hesitant to post anything unless I know for a fact, it's something he wants me to talk about. So. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's the best way to do it anyway. I'm I'm kind of in the same place you're at as far as I'm burnt out on social media. I'm, you know, hardly posting at all. And, and uh, I'm just kind of focusing on the podcast right now and trying to uh, wait for some inspiration. I never used yeah. to post unless I felt inspired anyways. And yeah. I just haven't felt that. No, we can't that. fake it. No, I can't fake it. So right. I haven't felt it lately. So I haven't posted in like two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. Hey, Aaron, real quick, because you had made a comment about you're making your music in 432 hertz. Yeah. Uh, for someone who doesn't 
understand what you mean by that. Just yeah. like really, really quick, really quick, just go in into that briefly. Sure. So on my, um, I know for sure it's on my YouTube page. It's one of the shorts that I've made. Um, I don't think I've reposted it on my new TikTok account, but I show a, a graph of what 432 hertz like looks like um, with cymatics. And mm -hmm. cymatics is just the visual representation of what a frequency is actually creating when it's spoken or sung or uh, played. And is so, it is it like because I've seen some videos like say they put a bunch of sand and then they turn on a frequency mm -hmm. and it like makes a star or circle. That's what that is. is. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So those are those are called and I might have the pronunciation wrong. Cladney plates. Uh, mm. C H L A D N I. And those plates, yeah, they put sound on them. Or I'm sorry, they put sand on them. Yeah. And then that is connected with a bolt to a speaker. And yeah. then they run like a frequency machine through the speaker. And actually, you could even just do it with an app these days. I would just be concerned. I'm more of an analog kind of guy when it comes to that kind of stuff, because you know you're getting like the actual frequency and not whatever your electronics say that the frequency is. And then you run it through. And yeah, as you change the frequency, it changes the shape of the sand. And I remember seeing it's that. It's phenomenal. It, yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? Yeah, it is. So I'm actually getting ready to, I, I've felt inspired to do this and it, keep, it keeps coming back up. So I, I'm going to take that as a sign. But yeah. um, the next step that I want to take with my content, if it's not music, I want it to be still kind of related to music to help under, people understand why I'm so passionate about it and see it the way that I do. And um, I'm going to buy the equipment. It's actually not even that expensive. You just got to know which stuff to buy. You can get most of it at Goodwill. And I'm going to put together the equipment to be able to film what these frequencies do for myself and show people visually what they do and how they're represented. But to, to, to answer, get back to the question that I was asked, um, right. four, 432 hertz is the frequency that everything was tuned to all the way up until the early 1930s. So when I say everything was tuned to, I mean, it, it's, it's called a 432 hertz. So like, Back in the day, they used tuning forks, an A-432 an a hertz tuning fork. They hit the tuning fork, they hear the note, and that's what they tune their, their A key to on their piano or their guitar or their violin, whatever the case is. And then once they've got their A key tuned, then they can go, I mean, I could literally grab my guitar right now and show you guys, but I can explain it just the same. And once it's tuned, that one note is tuned to that, then they can tune the rest of the instrument from there. So like on a piano, they really only need the tuning key, the tuning fork for one key. And then hmm. literally all of the rest of the keys can be tuned to that frequency. So not every single note that's going to be played is going to be a true 432 hertz, right? The A is, but what happens is the accompaniment. It's that, in the key of A, right? Is that the correct it's in, term? It's, it's in the key of A. Right. But like, like, so like, okay, so if you were to go listen to... Uh, a432 and a440 the average person wouldn't really hear a huge difference it's basically just like you play the note and then like if you grab the knob and tune it down it'd be like like it's not a full <laughs> step down it's not or like as opposed to or like that's a full or a half step down right but like with this it's not a full step so like it's just enough as uh, uh, the best way to it's put it subtle. It's just enough it's subtle but it's just enough to take the edge off like right. and i mean okay. that literally so if you see the graph of 432 hertz versus 440 hertz you will visually see the 440 hertz frequency it's it's chaotic it all starts to blur together it all starts to like form one massive blurry shape and the 432 hertz frequency when it's played is it, it's completely symmetrical like it's beautiful. It's completely symmetrical. There's lines, there's no blurring together. And so like you can visually see what the note does, right? So if we are to believe that we are made up of how much ever water and these frequencies are beaming through us, we have to believe that that's having a tangible, actual physical effect on our bodies and our mm -hmm. psyche and our mental health and all of the stuff, all of the things. And so, um, yeah, it's I deep. It is deep, That's but it's deep. also, but it's also so subtle and so simple. Mm -hmm. And like, so in the third, in the thirties, they changed the, the tuning frequency internationally 
from A432 to A440. And when you see the visualization of what 440 hertz actually does, and you realize that that's still the same frequency that they're tuning all music to, that's like, it, it explains a lot. So not only are they using certain musicians and certain genres and certain um, scales of specific notes to emotionally trigger people, they're, they're, they're using their lyrics, they're using the visuals, but they're putting subsonic frequencies in there as well that people aren't even aware of. And in a lot of cases, they can't hear them. But like at risk of sou- sounding new agey, and I don't even care if anyone thinks that, but yeah, it, it's, it's just the way it is. If you just pay attention to the way that music makes you feel, mm-hmm. you'll literally know everything that you need to know. Like yeah. above and beyond what they're even saying in the song. Because um, I'll just say this, and I, and I mean no ill will towards anyone towards any industry or anything but most artists are unaware of this it's the engineers and the producers and the um the people pulling the strings and financing these things even a lot of them don't know but they're the ones that mostly know in the music in the music industry and a lot of uh artists are starting to become aware of this but they don't know what they can do about it because they're either using someone a friend um, I should say utilizing a friend or a colleague or someone to be their engineer and to be their producer because they don't know how to work at all. They just know how to maybe sing or play guitar and then maybe know how to write music. So they've got some somebody helping them write their music. But when you get a little deeper and you, you learn um, deeper into music and you learn how to do all of it and you learn how to not only write the songs, but learn about like maybe why you're drawn to certain scales in, in, in the chord progressions, maybe why you're drawn to certain types of music, certain um, frequencies, even more specifically. And then you start to understand how it works. Like you start to realize that all of the digital audio workstations, they're called DAWs in, in the recording industry. So like Pro Tools, that's the most popular one. Um, uh, FL Studios is a common one for people that do a lot of hip hop and electronic music, EDM stuff. And then you've got, of course, uh, what is it called? Uh, Garage Band and Logic. Those are the Apple versions that are a little less expensive. Logic's like kind of in between them all. Logic is what I use and it's fully capable. But when you're controlling a digital audio workstation, you can actually set the frequency of the entire song to a 432 right at the beginning and so most most artists are not aware of this or doing this and so even amongst the christian artists in the christian music industry and that's another topic entirely um they're not utilizing this they're not doing this because either a they don't understand it they don't know about it or I'll just be totally honest with you. What generally happens is as soon as someone like me starts talking about it, they just assume that I'm a new age spiritualist mm. and that I'm into demonic things and they don't even want to have a discussion. And like the reality of it is, dude, n- nothing that I say is not founded in scripture. Like nothing that I say or believe, more importantly, forget what I say, nothing, what, nothing that I believe truly in my heart is uh, at odds with anything that the Bible says, like that's the foundation. That's the thing I test everything against. So anything I I might believe or think as a possible theory, if I can, if I can disprove that theory in scripture, then I don't, I don't spend another minute on it. I just let it go. I forget about it. Yeah. And, and this, uh, I don't want to get too much off topic and we could get into the, the subject that we're going to talk about. Whatever you want to talk about, man. No, no, no. But that, uh, I want, I just wanted to bring this up because you had brought up the, the whole new age thing, because it's a, it's a really, a big hang up for a lot of people. And I ran into this specific thing actually yesterday because there are certain people out there that say, oh, well, since a new ager has said this, or since new agers believe this, that must mean that it's bad. But like, just because that they're saying or teaching something, that doesn't mean that it's not true. And who says that they have uh, the ownership of that thing? Like it's, it, it's, gods you know what i mean like what you're saying this is his reality this is his world so why do they get ownership of all that stuff when in reality um you know it's it's the way that god created things and 
they they just may be more awake to those certain things as the sleeping Christian. And and a yet million they, percent. They, and they turn it off, like you said, because oh, a new ager said it. A million percent. And dude, you just yes, everything you said I agree with. And in my own experience, having gone down that path for a little while and even getting into energy work and like I've got a ton of stories that I could talk about with regards to that, but I don't like giving it any more attention than it's already gotten from me. I will just say this, and that is that most people in the new age movement, the new age spiritualism movement, most of them have it right. Yeah. It's just slightly wrong. And that slightly Mm. wrong is actually majorly wrong, but it's only off by one thing. And so let me just explain for just a quick second, I'll try to use as little words as possible because we all know I like to talk, but the, the way that it, that they see things in terms of, first of all, I'll just say this. And that is that that community is a very loving and accepting community. So those people, of course, they find friends and make friends quickly because those people are so accepting because most of them have been through really crappy things in life and been hurt a lot by people. And it's the first time that they're meeting people that are accepting them for who they truly are. They don't care about all that other stuff. And they're showing these people real love. Like that's real. And so I can attest to that. So that's the first appealing and attractive thing about it. That's how they get pulled in. Most of those people are searching for the truth, legitimately searching for the truth. And so as, as a result of that, most of them are absolutely genuine and straight, straight up and honest. And you're getting a more a more real version of most humans than what other people are used to. What starts to happen though is without Jesus, as we know, on the throne, in all ways, in everything that we see, in everything that we acknowledge as good, as as pure, as righteous, um, that's where everything goes askew. So these people at the end of the day ultimately are worshiping themselves exactly. or they're worshiping a false light. And I'm not even going to say the false light's name because I, I just, I don't do that. But sure. so they're not realizing that. So as they're manifesting and that's real, by the way, it works as they're putting their hearts and souls and their energy and their focus into things and they're manifesting these things and they're coming into their lives. They're experiencing something they've never experienced before. All while hanging out with friends in a community that make them feel very loved and accepted and safe. And it doesn't take very long to start thinking you're, you're a bit of a Jedi when you're living like that. Right. (laughs) Oh, a hundred percent. It doesn't take very long. And then you start, you know, then you come to a crossroads of how far can I go with this? Like, what else can I learn? What else can I manifest? Oh, I can do, I can do hexes on people you say. Oh, I can do. So then like you start being challenged as a person. Are you a good person? Are you a bad person? And there are people amongst that community that will straight up tell you they're good witches and they're good warlocks and they're good. They're good wizards. They're good mages, whatever. Um, And they fully believe that. And I will say that in the world's eyes, they are generally pretty good people as far as the world's standards go. They're not doing the same horrible things that a lot of these people are doing in the dark. However, all of them doing that are pulling their energy from the same source. They're all deceived. They're all they're It's all dark magic. It's all coming from a, a false light. And that's the part that they don't understand. And so like, let me, and the best example that I can give is this, you guys, I know that you already know this, but, but humor me and whoever's watching, you know what it felt like to believe that you loved Jesus right? When you thought you loved Jesus, but you also now know what it's really like to love Jesus and to feel the love of Jesus. It's not the same as what you once thought it was when you first got saved. Am I right? Right. Yeah. Right. Nothing can prepare you for the actuality of what it is and what it looks like, because through that process of asking to become a godly man, you have to get utterly destroyed to a certain point. And remolded into his vision of you and his version of you so that you can be a usable vessel for his work and the things that he requires. And so that you can prove yourself faithful in the small things and all. So it does, when you fully grasp who he is and what he's done for us, 
there is a moment where, and I see this happen a lot in the new age community, where they start to realize that whoever they think their dad really is, their spiritual dad, he's not all powerful. He's not all powerful. And he's not almighty. And that, that gets the intelligent ones that have their calculators out and they're doing basic math. That gets them going, okay, so if this, whatever this energy is, whatever this source is that I've been serving for the last how many ever years is not the ultimate power, what is? And then that's when usually people start to, hopefully the Holy Spirit at that point, and this is what I choose to believe, he sends somebody into these people's paths to help seal the deal and, and yeah. finish that thought process for them and show them the real love of the Savior in a way that they've never experienced before. So they're finally able to see that the love they were receiving was a counterfeit love. And now they've got that real love. And so tell me there's not a difference in y'all's prayer lives now versus before you knew he was absolutely and unequivocally real. Like it's a knowing. So like, I know now when I pray or I get, you know, my friends or brothers on a same, the same page to pray for something, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, he's going to do it. And I'm not talking about naming it and claiming it. I'm talking about absolutely righteous prayers that have nothing to do with any kind of selfish, selfish gain. You know, um, I believe we saw that take place recently with uh, Hurricane Milton. I genuinely do. Because I chose personally, and I'm not saying it's because of me. I'm saying it's because a ton of people saw this the same way that I do. This time around more than any other time. I chose not to, to feed into the fear. I mean, newscasters were crying. The governor was crying. Like, they were telling everyone it was going to be a Category 6 for his landfall. I chose to get on my platform with not the biggest reach I, I've had before and share a little bit about this with people, but instead say, listen, guys, we need to pray about this because this is a spiritual battle. And I believe that if we fight this in the spirit together and we stand on the truth of Jesus and his promises and everything he's done for us and everything he's shown us, I believe that we can make a difference in this storm. And look what ended up happening. Like, yes, I understand some people got hurt, but dude, it wasn't even a two when it hit landfall. Like I had multiple <laughs> friends in the path with farmland and animals and stuff. None of them got hurt. One of them lost power for a few minutes, yeah. but like it was nothing like what they said. And so I will straight up say, I believe that that is a result of a ton of actual spiritual warriors stepping up and, and praying through that and giving him the opportunity to, to show his glory. Cause that's literally what that was. There's no other way to look at it, regardless of whether it was man-made or not man-made. So like, that's the difference, right? They manifest from the heart, but they're serving a false light. We also manifest from the heart. The only difference is we're manifesting. Okay. We are not manifesting. We are letting the Holy Spirit do the manifesting. Let me right. make a hard correct there. We are, we are giving the throne and the space to Jesus, but like the, the energy and the, the authenticity that we're giving it through our heart, you could equivocate that to what the new agers do in their manifesting. The only difference is they're manifesting for selfish gain in most cases. And in our right. case, we're taking that real love and that real passion and that real, just everything that comes with serving the Holy spirit and giving it to him. And he's able to then go boom. Like, like I, no one can convince me otherwise, but that's, that's the, those are the similarities. They're so close, but so far away. And the only thing that's going to get someone that is following that path off of their mindset is by literally being shown the love of Jesus by somebody. It's going to take an individual that steps into their life, in most cases, that's going to show them the actual love and patience and kindness of Jesus in a way that no one's ever shown them. It's not going to be because they got, they got scriptures thrown at them. It's not going to be because they got... It's, it's usually going to be someone that understands exactly where they're at. And yeah. to a certain, a, a certain, cause most of them, they're just, they're just a little bit off, right? They're, if we're, if mm. we're using frequency as an example, and let's just for argument sakes, say 432, 432 Hertz is the frequency of the Holy spirit, which is not what I'm saying. I'm just using this as an example. These people, a lot of them are at 431 or 430. Right. Like they're so close. They just need that extra little bit of love. So anyway, sorry, you got me fired yeah. up. That's a passionate topic. No, yeah. Me. Oh yeah. That's, that was great. Uh, 
I, I love the, the discussion here, but let's take a, a segue now and let's get into the topic at hand. You had talked to Shane yeah. and you said you wanted to come on and talk about the simulation theory. So this right here too is a big uh, topic for debate, obviously. Yeah. And kind of dovetails with the new age stuff too. Cause that, yeah, and ex- you don't really hear Christians talking about it. Right. And and I was going to say it kind of segues perfectly with the whole new age thing, because new agers, I know a lot of them are huge on this simulation theory. We've seen it in the movies. The Matrix is probably the most popular Mm. one that kind of demonstrated all of this. And what's crazy is that I've heard someone say, I forgot who it was, but they said that uh, the Matrix was actually a documentary, not a movie, which yeah. is pretty interesting. But uh, what what are your thoughts, and what what do you think about the simulation theory, or what is it for anyone who doesn't know? So, okay, so the whole the whole premise of simulation theory is um, Elon's talked about this a lot. In fact, he's talked about he's talked about it probably in the most like tangible ways to understand it more than anyone else a lot of people get really deep and they lose their audience really fast on this topic because they start getting into the weeds with the numbers and all the things and um i i just want to say this too i have not arrived at any absolute conclusions i just have a theory or a possibility that could be the case and it would dovetail into everything we already believe it does not challenge anything that we stand on okay so what I'm going to present as my possibility, it doesn't it doesn't contradict anything that we know to be true in scripture or anything that we follow. Jesus is still on the throne. Like none of that is challenged in my theory. Um but I just want to say so so the overall theory of simulation is when you consider the growth that we've had in um or the developmental progress we've seen in technology and computers and computing power and prowess and what they're capable of and what they can do. And you look at what they've, what they've accomplished just literally between the nineties and now, even you look at how far we've progressed. And as Elon Musk has said, and and I'm not supporting him, I'm just using him as an example because there's a lot of clips out there of him talking about this. What he says is if you, if you account for even a little bit of progress based on the current scale that we've already seen in our lives from where we were to where we are. And you continue down the path of progress just based simply on time. It's inevitable that we eventually come to a point where we create a simulation, right? And like, the thing is like we've already kind of done that in video games, right? Like you've got the Sims, You've got um, in multiple capacities. There's the old Sims where you create and and control a whole city, and then there's the newer ones where you create families and control the families and like their reactions. And they've got AI running them and their reactions, the things that they do and the things that they say. I'm sure some of you guys have seen the clips of some of these newer video games where they've got AI infused into some of these NPCs in the game. And NPC, for anyone watching that hasn't heard by now, it's a non-player character. So they're <laughs> all of the characters in a video game that like don't really ever have anything new to say. They just repeat the same things over and over again. Some of them don't talk at all. They just, but they, you know, they follow the same paths. Like in most of these role-playing games, you can see them walking down the same path every day at the same time. Like, and that alone is is a weird topic, right? Because we see that in humans all the time. I feel like I'm surrounded by NPCs every time I go to the grocery store. People just drones, dude, just doing the thing, doing this, doing that. Like, I've tried talking to people before when they're in that state and like sometimes they don't even look at me. Like, I'm not, it's just, this this whole thought process goes (laughs) very deep. So, um, that's the premise. That if we look at any kind of a scale of of growth in technology at this stage it's inevitable that we that we get to a point where we can create some kind of simulation where the people in the simulation actually believe they're real like the Mm. ai characters actually believe they're real and we've kind of already seen this where 
there's a clip out there of some guy trying out some new game and in the engine, they've got the NPCs programmed with artificial intelligence and their responses and they've got voice so they can speak. They've given them the engines to be able to speak. So there's a guy walking up to this character on the street and, and like, they can only go so far. There's like invisible walls, like in the matrix basically. And as they walk up to these walls and they're like hitting the walls, this guy's walking up to the guy. He goes, he goes, you know, you're not real, right? Like you're not, you're not human. And like, you can literally like hear the dialogue take place of this NPC having like an existential crisis. And there is even one where like this one NPC swears, he keeps saying he's got to get back to his family. I got to get back to my family. And he mentions a specific city in a specific town. He mentions his wife's name. He mentions his like, and this is an NPC allegedly with AI intelligence. And like you can see, it's so tr- it's like literally determined to get back to its family. Like, think about that for just a second. So, like, you see what I'm saying now, right? Like, it's kind of come full circle. Like, we've arrived at the point where we can visually see these NPC characters having existential crises because they truly believe they're real. So, before I go any deeper, I just want to hear your guys' thoughts on anything you've heard about simulation or what you think coupled with what i just said and what you've previously heard it's a d- it's really a deep mental exercise oh yeah for sure um i don't i mean i don't honestly know a whole lot about it because i've i've never really researched it or looked into it and basically all i do know about it is what i've seen on tiktok and social media um and it's always like you said it's comparing it to the matrix and mm-hmm. or ricardo said i think um comparing it people comparing it to the matrix you know thinking we're in some sort of real life matrix but then again i've seen people like uh dead hidden um talk about it as if we're in you know god's video game you know simulation theory like that like we're you know god created the most sophisticated video game you could ever imagine and, and say what you will about him, that analogy that he makes for that specific analogy, it's it's pretty solid. Like, it yeah, it's sense. a good analogy. It, it is a good analogy. And and you know, him wanting to play in his own game, he, you know, of course, you know, that was Jesus Christ. He came into yeah. his own game through Jesus, and you know, I mean, it's it's very interesting. I I just don't know enough about it to really speak on it, and that's why I'm glad. You know, I'm glad we brought you on and. I'm glad you know as much as you do about it because I mean it's interesting. I, I'm open minded. I, I you know, I will listen to anything and, you know, weigh it out of my head and and of course compare it against scripture and mm-hmm. and kind of go from there. But um dude, this this day and age, I mean anything's possible. You know right? anything's possible. So Ricardo, what are your thoughts? Yeah, mm-hmm. so I was just thinking about, uh, you know, you were talking about non-player characters. Mm -hmm. Shane and I were talking about that today, too, actually, when we were kind of discussing it. And there are a lot of those around, too, like what you're saying, which is an interesting topic. It's just like they have no thoughts. They're just kind of existing and, and really like no intelligence to some of these people. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's just crazy too like when you do think about um the matrix and and the video games like what you were saying and now they got the what is it the oculus thing where it's like this visual reality and everything is real as far as what you can see what you can hear but as far as other senses, like you don't have like the taste, you don't have the touch and stuff like that. So are like, are we getting to a point to where, where they could simulate that as well? And, and I'm sure they, they can through, you know, bringing up Elon Musk talking about like Neuralink and stuff where they mm-hmm. connect it to your brain, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Where, you know, cause he's, he's talked a lot about um ai and how basically we already deal with it on non-stop basis where you know 
just having our phone, we're so much smarter than than what we can think of in our own heads. But mm-hmm. then the whole like connection with the Neuralink and stuff is just like instead of having to type it with your fingers, you just think it with your head and it just pops yeah. up or something like that, which is nuts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's 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 interesting. I I I uh, I can't say one one way or another, but I. I have seen some things that really uh, just make you raise an eyebrow. I've seen some videos. There was this one lady and she was talking to a bunch of her chickens and it's like her chickens just paused. They all just stopped. I don't know if anyone's, yeah, they froze. I don't know if anyone's listening has ever seen that video, but if they all stop, literally all of them, it's crazy, dude. It's creepy. It is creepy. Yeah. And and there's other videos like that where it looks like I've seen birds in the air. It looks like they're just stuck in the air and they're not flying. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just like they snap out of it. And then it's just like back to reality. But it's just like yeah. that's and, – and a lot of people in these – in these videos, they say, is it a glitch in the matrix or th- exactly. in the simulation? You know what I mean? Just like in the that's movie. The only like, way to, like, that's the only way to like make sense of it. Yeah, because those really? birds, those birds were still as a statue for, I would say, what thirty to forty-five seconds, and then and all of a sudden, of airplanes doing it too. Airplane, yeah. I was gonna say that airplanes froze like, in midair in the sky. Yeah, like how hard stuff, how? dude. Hard no, stuff. no, yeah. no debating. Like, yeah, sorry. Like, yeah. So it's I mean, crazy. it's just things like that that it's just odd to me. I, I just don't know what to to make of it. So so maybe maybe the things that I'm about to share will help yeah. fill in some puzzle pieces. Um, yeah, let's I go. can't say it because everybody's got a different a different um, collection of puzzle pieces on their table, so to speak, right? Like, <laughs> and that's that's all. Like I've kind of been that way my whole life. Like we were talking before the before we started this about me finding out that I'm on the spectrum and that's the best way for me to explain the only thing that I can make sense of in my life with the way my brain works is that I've always wanted to test like the water, so to speak, in every single regard so that I understood the rules of the game. That's the best way I can explain it. Like I never questioned whether there was a God, whether there was a creator. I just always knew like I, I feel like you just know that or you don't. Right. And so like, I always knew that there was a creator. Um, but like my whole life has just been a barrage of collecting puzzle pieces and not knowing where they go. And I'll forget about some of them and then I'll learn something or something will happen or the Holy spirit will kind of drop a nugget of information into my heart. And all of a sudden there's like these 40 puzzle pieces over here that I never knew what to do with. They all make sense now. And I, it's not the kind of thing where I can be like, I'm not going to make content on it and tell everybody, this is the way it is guys. This is the way it works. And this is, I just know that he showed me that and no one can change my opinion or my mind on the way that I see that anymore because it's something he did within me. And so instead of going on a crusade to try to get people to believe or see it the way that I see it, um, I just kind of fit that in with all the other puzzle pieces and go, okay, this is obviously an additional tool that I can utilize to help show people the love of Jesus, right? Like that's really what it all comes down to. That's what everything's being funneled into and what everything is supposed to be about. So any knowledge that I do gain, especially when I believe it's something he's shown me has to be for that purpose. Cause again, we know that all things work together for good. Right? So it's like, it all comes back to the things that he's already promised us and shown us. So let me just share a few little things that I have observed and things that I think that might make sense of things. I think Neuralink is a psyop to get people to think that we haven't been able to do that for a very long time. I think that they already have control of people of a lot of people's brains. And I think they've done that through nanobot technology. And I think people have consumed things, whether it's food because after all, almost everything in the grocery store now says that it includes bioengineered ingredients, and most people do not give a crap. They just consume that stuff the same way they always did. But that's a new thing. They might have been doing it for a while, but they tell us that they're doing it now, and that has not changed the way a lot of people eat. And 
I understand. I get it. You know, cause you've got the two camps, you've got the, well, I'm protected by the Holy spirit. So I don't give a crap what they say or what they do. Like he's got me. I get that. I totally <laughs> get that. I, I get that. I, and I appreciate that. I respect that because um, I feel that way about a lot of things. Um, but like, we can't, we can't ignore the fact that there's been a progressive and, a, and aggressive. Um, I mean, dude, they started talking about nanobots in like what the first Iron Man movie. Yeah. Like, and how long ago did that come out? That came out a long time ago. That was like the first time it was ever shared with us, like on a massive scale. Yeah, that's like 2008 this... or something like that. Right. And so he's using this nanobot technology. That's how he puts these suits on in the form of a briefcase. You know, he hits a button on the briefcase and it turns into a suit. So like, I'm just going to say that I fully believe we've had that tech for a very long time. And I think that they've already utilized it and put it in people's brains. And I think that there are people out there right now who are having their data stolen from them. They're being hijacked to do who knows what, and they may not even know it. They may not have any idea. And I just want to say before I go any further, we already know because scripture tells us this, that we are vessels, right? We are literally just vessels. So like we're, we're, we're just conduits. And this also plays into the matrix where like we're just conduits, but like we choose what fills us. We have a choice. We can either, we can either take this source of energy or this source of energy. If you're going to break it down into something as simple as calling it energy. But the reality of it is the love that he gives us, how else can you, can you explain it? It's, it's insane. It's supernatural. Like, you shared some stuff with me before we started recording. I got a physical surge of energy in my body when you shared some of that stuff because it made me feel loved by the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. And so, like, that happened. I don't, I don't have to argue that with anybody. Like, the verbiage I'm using might upset some people, but if they were just to sit down and listen to the things that I'm saying, I think that they would realize that we're more on the same page than, than they, might, they might understand. And so... It would make sense if we are vessels and we choose what fills our vessel that the promises that we stand on, and this is where it also comes into having the appropriate and correct knowledge of what the Bible actually says, it specifically says that no one can know our thoughts but him. He is the only one that can know our thoughts. I know born again, okay, born again Christians that create content, that have created content specifically telling people that these apps can read our thoughts in our brains and they know everything about us. And that's just straight up witchcraft because the Bible tells me otherwise. And so I believe that, that what he says is true, that, that no one can know our thoughts except for him. Can they read our patterns? Obviously. Can they read, like, do they know what your struggles are? Obviously. Like the demonic realm is very tightly knit. We know that, you know, um, the L word is the prince of the air, right? He's got, he's got authority over the air or um, it's prince of the air, I think is what this, what the scripture says. Mm-hmm. Prince, which, prince in power of the air. Or... So like what's, what's sent through the air frequencies, signals, mm-hmm. satellite relays, like all, all of the things. And so when you look at it that way, you know, you got, there's so many layers of understanding that people need, right? Like, the Holy Spirit's omnipresent. He can be having an individual experience with you while he's having an individual experience with me, while he's having an individual experience with Shane. And all of us are having literally intimate encounters and conversations with him that are absolutely unique. Meanwhile, the demonic realm cannot do that. The demonic realm works more like a hive mind where, you know, we do have demons, unfortunately, keeping an eye on things and watching things. And they've been doing this for as long as we've been alive and before. And they know everything that they've observed, right? They know everything that they've seen or that people have spoken or that's been taken place. That's why people can conjure dead, dead family members from the past. And they say things that are familiar to what an old family member said, because they have this knowledge in this database of the things that have actually physically transpired on earth, but they're a network. They communicate with each other. It's like, it's like a game of telephone. Okay. Mm. This is how, this is how a clairvoyant in Europe can know about what so-and-so had for their dinner last night in California because these demons communicate. They share this information. And if you have chosen to not fill your vessel with the Holy Spirit, 
unfortunately, you're fair game. You're you're literally fair game for them to to do really whatever they have permission to do. And that's again, that's between God and and them. But uh, at the end of the day, nothing happens that that our Creator, that the Holy Spirit has not given permission to be able to do. So when you look at all of this stuff and you you look at the facts and you look at what we know to be true and you compare it against the Bible. We know we're conduits. So then you look at the matrix and it's like the agent Smith thing. I know firsthand that Shane has experienced this because we've talked about it, but I'm pretty sure everyone has where you might be in a public setting or somewhere doing something. And out of nowhere, someone very close to you, just their energy shifts absolutely and completely. They turn yeah. into a, they turn into a total, totally different person. Maybe substances are involved. Maybe they're not. And maybe it's a stranger, but out of nowhere, there's someone that, that's got their eye on you and they're staring straight into your soul. And they've got a problem with you, right? They've got a beef with you or a friend starts becoming rowdy and digging up your past or saying things like people shift in an instant. To me, that is exactly what the matrix was showing us with agent Smith, how some of these vessels that have not chosen to be filled with the Holy spirit are instantly getting zapped and controlled. It's like a network, dude. It's like a giant network where, where the enemy can immediately send one of his minions into one of these people to control them for whatever nefarious purpose he has. Even if it's just to disrupt things in the moment or to cause confusion in my life or whatever the case is. So like I used to see that stuff as like, dude, what's going on? And I, you know, I'd tell my friends, I got a crazy story for you. You'll never guess what happened last night. Now when that stuff happens, dude, I immediately like I can feel the demonic interference in, in my like I can feel it. It's palpable. And this is one of the reasons I don't go out a lot anymore because I just, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to, I don't want to experience that stuff unless I absolutely have to, unless he's called me to be in a place and there's a reason for it. Like, I just don't put myself out there like that anymore because I know it's real. I know that stuff happens. And, um, and it, maybe my, my thought process is not, I, I know that I'm kind of in a place where like, maybe I'm a little too on the negative side of like not wanting to put myself out there and. Um, that's changing. You know, he's doing work in me with regards to that, but it's because I know this, this war is real. It's because I know that we're in a spiritual war. It's because it's, it's observable for me. Like it's observable in real time. Like I do not see things for the way that, that we see things with our eyes. I don't see them that way. I haven't seen them that way for quite some time. Like I see things four or five layers deeper and it's not a brag. I, I wish I could turn it off sometimes, but, um, it's, it is what it is. And that being said, let me just say one more thing and then I'll stop talking so you two can give me your thoughts because I haven't shared my theory yet. I'm just setting the groundwork. Yeah. Um, I, as far as dimensions go, this is what really will get your brain thinking about the things unseen. A lot of us know in our, in our heads that the spiritual realm is real, that the demonic realm is real, that all of that stuff is real, but we don't know how to make sense of it, right? We just have faith that it's real. But we don't really fully know what that looks like. And so the first dimension, right? Mm-hmm. You think of something. It's not, it's not been put out in any visible space. The, the first dimension is in your brain. Second dimension is like 2D games, right? Side-scrolling games like Mario. Yeah. That's two dimensions because you're seeing it's flat. Drawing a picture on a piece of paper, that's two dimensions. Third dimension is us. It's what we see, the physical, like, we have no, we have no understanding of what the fourth dimension would look like visually, like none. Right. And I know that some people say that there might be like up to 11 dimensions. Have you heard that before? I've heard that. And I try not to go, I try not to go too deep into all of that because I just don't know, man. I know. I, I have no way, like there could be infinite. I couldn't even comprehend that. Like how, like what would even, so this three dimensional reality that we see, feel, taste, touch, what would even be, what would, what would the fourth dimension look like if, if you've kind of looked into that? What, what, it, what is, what is that? <laughs> it's basically like everything unraveled. So like, um, do you remember the, do you remember the Tesseract? I do from the Marvel movies? Yeah. So the Tesseract would be an example of what the four, four, four dimensional looks like for a cube. Like you've got the cube 
and then mm -hmm. you've got the extensions going out from each corner and then you've got the lines being connected and then you've got like the additional cube so it's like it's like a an unraveled double reflection of what we see with our eyes i don't i don't really fully know how to explain it but like yeah it's obviously it's obvious that like the fourth or fifth dimension is where all of the spiritual stuff is taking place that we cannot see cuz they can see they can see us right like they they're aware of us and they're aware of what we're doing but they can't but we are not aware of them unless we're given some sort of discernment right like as to yeah. what's going on yeah what you know those glasses like in the movie they live what would you put those on if you could um no yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't <laughs> No, I, will, I really wouldn't. I, I don't those... want to. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you asked a question. No, I, I'm. I wouldn't. <laughs> I think a real version of those glasses, you know, exists, or that technology actually exists in real life. I swear to, because there's reports Dicyan of it in died. Vietnam. Right. What is what is that? It's a special dye that they used to use for the lenses and the night vision cameras that literally gave their soldiers the ability to see into the spiritual realm. Mm. And when they were fighting in Vietnam, like they were flying around the hell, you know, helicopters at night, they were literally seeing demons flying side by side with them and, the, you know, outside the helicopters. And they were shooting at these, the soldiers were shooting at these demons and the pilot, you know, probably didn't have the glasses on. He's like, what are you doing? What are you shooting at? And they're trying to explain what they're shooting at and what they're seeing. And, you know, I, I, they were just freaked out. So mm -hmm. you have all these different soldiers that were wearing the night vision cam uh, goggles uh, shooting at things that other people couldn't see. And they described them as demonic entities that could literally fly, I guess, had some sort of, you know, bat-like wings. I don't know. But um, after that, after Vietnam, they destroyed all of those. They recalled and destroyed all those night vision goggles um, and and actually banned this, that particular dye that went into making them, those lenses. So you can't even get it. The dye still exists, but it's illegal. You cannot get it anymore. It's and a I higher level than a, any controlled substance. Like even if you've got government clearance, you have to have some kind of crazy government clearance to even get your hands on the die. Yeah. <clears throat> so I think that movie They Live was kind of like, you know, is obviously some sort of truth in plain sight. Um, I don't know, dude. But I don't know if I'd put them on or not. In a way, my curiosity side wants, you know, would, would want to put them on. And just to see what all is really around me. Because if you can see the demons, you can also see the angels. Because the Bible says, you know, we have guardian angels around us all the time, too. So I would want to see the angels. I wouldn't want to see the demons. But I'm sure you might would see a little bit of both. I just and, don't think most people are equipped physically, mentally, or spiritually to be able to handle yeah. what they would actually see in the spirit realm if they could see it. And that's the reason we can't see it. Yeah. I yeah. Just, it, like, And I'm okay with keeping it that way because... There are moments in my life where I can I can feel it and I can sense it and I know that it's there. Like I I know when I'm in the presence of evil. I know I know it. I know I'm in, when I'm in the presence of demonic. Um, I know when I'm in the presence of something beautiful, whether it's one of his angels or what. I I try not to put too much thought into that, but it's palpable when I'm in the presence of evil. And I'll and, but then I know how to pray and I know I know how to handle it. I, I don't. I've seen some things for sure. But I don't want to see. I, I yeah, I wouldn't want to see. All no, that. I'm I'm with you too, Aaron. I wouldn't want to put those glasses on either. I'd just be freaky. But uh, just to just to keep it rolling on on the yeah, topic yeah. at hand, do, do you want? And you're to, welcome to cut out anything you yeah. want, man. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. Uh, go ahead and and just keep on going with with yeah. um, what your theory is. You said that you were laying the groundwork and stuff like that. Yeah. So let's uh, let's uh, hear some more about what you're thinking about it. So I've been, um, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. I just haven't had the, the platform to do it. And, but so here's my thoughts. Have you guys seen quantum computers? Yeah. Yeah. 
you can, there's no way you can tell me that any human mind came up with that technology. No. There's, there's no. no way there's no way you're going to convince me that human minds came up with the ability to know what materials to use to keeping them in subarctic temperatures absolute zero or like something isn't things. it say yes or something and they've like got to be like floating like they've got to have like be in like a like a no gravity state so like the way they accomplish that is like they're all hanging they're all hanging from something like, and in a lot of cases they use magnets even to keep them literally perfectly balanced between the floor and the ceiling electromagnetic so levitation correct yeah so so like there's just no way and if you look back at a lot of the um there's a lot of hieroglyphs that actually depict the exact same image of quantum computers the way that they like are kind of like like chandeliers or like circles like they're very specifically shaped there's hieroglyphs that actually have them in there so so this 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 thought process kind of like covers a lot of things a lot of people believe that when um when the Germans got down to Antarctica, wh wherever on the wall we're talking. New Schwabenland. Um, that's uh, a yeah. uh, shout out to Big John. We talked about all that. He said he was talking about that. that they were going to New Schwabenland or something like that. So a lot of people believe that when they originally found it, and they definitely got there before anyone else. Um, yeah. When they found it, that they found this technology that they actually they either found like actual physical representations of the fallen angels uh or or the nephilim or they, like they 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 ran into some sort of intelligence from from the fallen and that that's where a lot of these like there are a bunch of computers being kept like quantum computers and it would make sense because of the arctic conditions and just all of the things and all of the other stuff so who knows? It doesn't matter. It's just an interesting little nugget of information to hold on to based on everything else that we that we've read and that we we've, we've learned. Sure. So if you look back, if you have been a truther for even more than a month and you look back at our history, it's a pretty easy conclusion to arrive at that we are not the most technologically advanced that we've ever been. There's just no way. There's right. absolutely no way. In fact, it seems to me that we were the most technologically advanced in the very beginning and that it's gone nothing but backwards. It's got nothing but backwards. And there's been societies and cultures created intentionally without technology. And then some that were given portions of technology, like that makes sense to me. Like I'm not telling any, everyone that that's the way that it is, but I absolutely and unequivocally believe that we are not the most technologically advanced that we've ever been. There's too many things that, that we've uncovered and found that prove to highly sophisticated technological advances way back when. Okay. So now coupled with all of that information, we know that, and again, so, so some of this comes from the book of Enoch and I'm not at all telling people that it should have been a book of the Bible. I'm not at all telling people that like, you know, I'm not saying anything other than the fact that there are a few references in there. And all I will say is that they dovetail with other references in scripture that make sense. Okay. So like whether, whether or not this is exactly how it went down or not, here is, here is my, my possible theory. It would make sense to me because we already know that the fallen taught man all the secrets, right? We already right. know that the fallen came here with all of the knowledge of earth, all of it. They yeah. knew everything about it, everything we would consider science or witchcraft or whatever. They knew all about it. It would make sense to me that when they got here, they immediately started to plot and plan how they could overthrow the throne. They immediately, because that's, I mean, what else are they going to think about? They literally just got physically cast out of heaven. So they're, they're not dumb. They're powerful. It would make sense to me that they would immediately try to plot and figure out how they're going to overthrow the throne, how they're going to get Jesus <clears throat> off the throne and take it back. So it would make even more sense to me that what they would do is they would use all their knowledge that they had to create whatever method they could to help them figure it out. 
we kind of we kind of catch a, a glimpse of this when you see Doctor Strange in Endgame mm-hmm. going through all of the possibilities of what he could do to defeat or maybe it wasn't in game. It was one, maybe it was the first Dr. Doom. It was one of the Dr. Doom movies. I don't remember which one it was. No, it was one not, of the, not event. Dr. Doom. Uh, Doc, Dr. Strange. Dr. Strange. Sorry. Sorry. I just, yeah. did a it was in, it was in one of the Avenger movies where they, he plays out all the possibilities and there was like one in, I forget chance I that. Yeah. 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 But even that involved like things that like, weren't pleasant right people had to die to get there like it was like all of these things but it was the only shot they had yeah and so yeah so you're right it was dr strange and i don't remember which ep- which which movie it was but he's going through all of those those possibilities of what he can do it would make sense to me based on them coming to earth and having all the technology of the earth the only limitation they would have had when they landed on earth is they would have had to physically build these machines So they needed to go mine these materials in different places, which would explain things like maybe the Grand Canyon or other places in the world where we see all of these places with caves and caverns and areas of earth dug out to almost nothing. And we barely have the technology now to get to some of that stuff. It would make sense that they sent their minions all across the world to get the materials, the raw materials they needed because they couldn't just snap their fingers and these things be built like, they're in a they're they're in this dimension with the rules of this dimension, right? Yes. So yeah, they've got powers and yeah, they've got they've got knowledge, but they still have to follow the rules of this dimension. And so they built I I think it's a possibility that they built quantum computers or even above quantum computers, something so sophisticated where they ran simulations with all of the same rules of Earth. The same everything. The same, like, like, like literally all of the same characteristics, the same, like, ability, like the same exact data that they had gathered from, from the realm that they landed in, that they would create so many quantum computers to be able to run simulations, hundreds, thousands, millions, tens of millions, billions, I don't know, of all of the different possibilities that they could possibly have to overthrow Jesus. That seems to me like probably the smartest way for them to go about knowing how to navigate and what to do and, and, and where to go from there. So that begs the question of, because we've all had those moments where like things happen and we're like, wait, what? Like, is that real? Like, did I just see that? Or did that just happen? Or like, did this thing just happen? Or did that, did that just happen? Or whatever, like the glitch in the matrix type scenarios. Mm-hmm. So if we, were, if we were people living in one of those simulated Earth, simulated realities, would we, how would we know it? Like, how would we know it? But if they're also playing by all of the same rules, that means that we still have to have free will. That, mm-hmm. means, that, that means that Jesus still has to be on the throne. That's the only way to run an actual simulation is if all of the rules are exactly the same. That means that the power of Jesus is still real, but that means, but like we have to find them. And so wouldn't it make sense that like, that's why it's become so hard to hear his voice. It's become so hard to see the face of Jesus in the midst of all of these fake Christians and all of these like counterfeits and all of these things taking place. Like that's the only thing they can do. If, if indeed we are in a simulation or in base reality, as Elon likes to refer to it, they're going to do everything they can to keep us from figuring out the truth. And so, like, how infuriating it would be for them to run all these simulations and see even their simulated humans choosing Jesus and choosing Jesus over the world. And choose, like, all it would do is speak to the glory of God. All it would do is speak to the power of of God. And so how many times do you think they saw the outcome in these simulations of them losing, them being cast to hell, them being bound, all of the things. So all I'm saying is I think that's a possibility. I'm not saying that that I I rest in that and that I wake up thinking another day in the simulation. But it sure feels like it. I'll tell you, <laughs> like it it sure it sure actually feels like that. Yeah. So just to piggyback on that, are are you suggesting that the people that created these <clears throat> quantum computers are the ones 
who are creating the simulation, like they're the architect of this simulation, or or what, how does that work? I think I think the humans that are creating everything technological, including the iPhones and the mm-hmm. Android phones that we've got, they're all pawns. They have no idea. These are people that wanted yeah. power. These are people that wanted power, money, and control. And so they've been put in positions of earthly power and money and control. But at the end of the day, whether it's them or whether it's their their boss, at some level, people are doing rites and rituals and they're getting their orders directly from the demonic realm. They're getting they're getting told what to do directly from, you know, who we are told has dominion on this earth. They're getting their orders directly from the darkness. And so they're doing these things with the hope and the promise that they're going to get the money and the power and the fame and the glory, and they are the most deceived. And again, so we would be talking about vessels that have chosen willingly darkness. So they're not even really in control of themselves. True. I would almost, I mean, I would also assume that um, these same people that are in power, like you said, I don't think they've invented any of these things either. I think all this technology has been given to them by the fallen. Completely agree. They, they got to take credit for it, right? And they got to be rich and famous and powerful. The Steve Jobs of the world, the yeah. all of that. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The even the Bill Gates, you know, Bill Gates of exactly. the world. Exactly. All those people. But what I think they've also been promised because they obviously know the devil's real. They're talking and getting their marching orders and their technology from the devil. Right. Absolutely. So um they're if so if the devil they know the devil's real they must also know that god and jesus are real right sure so you know they have to ask you know at some point they've asked the devil but wait you lose in the end <laughs> I, I, you know don't you i don't Logic, i don't want right? to go to hell so you know he's fed them some type of lie some type of scenario where they supposedly win he's got them convinced that they can in fact defeat god in some way whether it's Mm -hmm. a nuke what i don't know you know what i mean but i don't i don't see even with all the money and the power and the fame if you know that you're eventually gonna die and go to hell and spend eternity there why would you do it you know the devil's real so you know god is real he's had to have convinced most of them because some of these are smart people Mm-hmm. I mean, so, a lot of them are dumb, but some of them are pretty intelligent. Um, he's had to have convinced them that there's some scenario where they're going to win and they're going to defeat God. And I think they believe that. Mm-hmm. They truly believe that. Or maybe he's promised them through technology some type of eternal life. You know what I mean? I, I well, don't know, but I really think they think they can be, defeat God. This Obviously, is why I can. tell people that like the elite are the most deceived. They are absolutely the most deceived because they do believe in all of that stuff. But also, also they, they did rites and rituals and, and like he manifested himself to them and showed himself to them and gave them real knowledge and gave them real. So like, you have to understand that these people, they weren't raised like us with the same line of thinking or given the same, they were raised in the darkness. They were taught that that is the truth. Like yeah. they serve the L word the same way with the same passion that I serve Jesus. It's yeah. not even a debate for them. It's not a question. And I do believe that they've been given promises of their own version of eternal life. Yeah. And I think we're starting to see some of that come into play with the meta stuff that Ricardo was just talking about. Yeah. And here's, here's another thing to consider too, with, with all that is we were talking about the new age stuff earlier and in their beliefs, they they think that Satan or Lucifer is actually the Jesus. good guy. Yeah, yeah, he's their they, Jesus, literally. Yeah, they think he's the good guy, and and he's the one that's bringing them. He's a light bringer. He's giving them the yes. knowledge. And God in the garden was trying to suppress them from knowledge, and he's the evil. Yes. One, he doesn't want you to know the truth, but Lucifer, Satan, wants you to have the truth. He doesn't want to keep anything from you, and he's actually the good guy. So it's exactly. they, they've actually reversed 
the roles and all that so where they actually think uh like yeah there's that possibility like what you said but then there's that other possibility where they they were brought up in in that like aaron said and they truly truly believed that that lucifer is the good guy and he only wants what's best for them because he's giving them all this knowledge and mm -hmm. stuff like that so it's inversion and we it see inversion. that inversion in every single aspect of society right down to the sex changes in some of these celebrities that they have people believing are female that are really male mm -hmm. and they've been doing this for as long as we can remember and that is one of the biggest sacrifices that some of these celebrities can possibly make is sacrificing their firstborn to be inverted um mm -hmm. or amongst very many other things but what you're talking about again at its core is inversion yeah. and so it fits exactly in line with everything that we're talking about so to answer your question every ounce i and i just i truly believe this and it's difficult to talk about because like we are so reliant on technology these days and i yeah. actually hate it mm -hmm. i hate it so much shane and i have talked at length about this and i wish we needed none of it and yes i understand there are some some silver linings to having it but like i fully believe technology is not for us it was Amen. never for us it was never meant to be for us it was always a tool against us and it was just presented to us in ways like you cannot possibly tell me that windows came out with all of the technology and all of the things and wait like you can't tell me that someone was at home and they just came up with all of these ways like magnificently to make it easier for people to do spreadsheets at home to make mm -hmm. it easier for people people to be able to write on their like there was always a bigger picture and always. that bigger picture was always about collecting our data and trying to find a back door into your soul. It was always about that. Yeah. Like, that's why. The... My bad. Go ahead, I didn't, please. I, didn't mean, I just want to interject. If you guys it. cut me off, I love it because it means <laughs> I need to stop talking. <laughs> no. That's why it's, he called it gateway computers. It was literally a gateway. Windows? Yeah, yeah, windows and Window gateways. To what? The spiritual realm, obviously. The yes. demonic realm, I think. Yes. I think technology, like you said, was absolutely designed um, by the fallen to ensnare us. You know what I mean? To enslave humanity. And here we are. I Look at phone. our youth. You know? Right. Uh, yeah, iPhone. iPhone, iPod. Yeah. The, yeah. the voice is, is called Siri. What's Siri backwards? uh iris I... <laughs> yes <laughs> it's all in our face dude yeah it's all in our face yeah yeah so what would what would be the the strongest argument like from your studies and also others <clears throat> that that it is a simulation i guess and and how um, and that's i think that's the hard thing is is i don't know how anyone could prove it with a shadow of a doubt. I mean, there could be like evidences here and there, maybe, or even the glitches yeah. that we've seen that don't make sense. But what, what do you think is uh, just a strong argument that it, that that is a possibility for well, our reality? I mean, if you look at some of the technology that they've found, like they found hard drives at the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. that were like literally petrified <laughs> like like and they they didn't look like our modern hard drives but they were very clearly hard drives mm -hmm. like with the disc and the whole there has been and this is just what what like has been exposed that we've seen like how much how much was taken away that we don't see that we haven't seen like you look at the mud floods and you look at, you know, when you talk about Tartaria and you talk about all the tech and civilizations that have been buried and that have been hidden from us, like there's so much that we don't know. And it would make sense that in the midst of all of that is a lot of these technologies and things that we're talking about that, I mean, I believe at some point in time, you know, they were used for good or they were utilized for good or someone came along. And if we, if we are to believe that we're in the short season, then there would definitely be a lot of suppressed 
uh, knowledge and suppress technology and things that were that were used specifically for good and for our betterment and for all of that stuff. So when you take a look at that in conjunction with just the cycles of nature, it's like, I don't care what anyone says. If they sit down and think about their life for long enough, everyone has a cycle and we keep repeating it. We've got our highs, we've got our lows, we've got everything in between. And generally speaking, if you're being honest and real with yourself and you're writing down and taking notes or even just mentally taking notes, there is a process to the way that you get through life. And again, you've got your mountains and you've got your valleys, just like you've got spring and you've got winter and you've got fall and you've got autumn. They keep repeating themselves. And you see this in nature. You see this in, um, and I'm not trying to get new agey, but with the Fibonacci oh, yeah. sequence, it, it's, that's, a, that's a real thing right. and you you can even you can even attest that to the way that the stars are set in the firmament and the way that it turns and the way that we see the same patterns and the same cycles you can also look throughout history and see that there's been rises and there's been falls and there's been depressions and there's been the complete opposite there has been destruction and then there's been peace and then there's been destruction on a whole new level and then there's been peace and that's undeniable. That's completely and absolutely undeniable. Like you can't not see that if you objectively look at the past. And so the simple fact that we do go through all these cycles and all these things happened, like how foolish is it to think that we are the first ones to be at this current precipice mm -hmm. right now with the technology that we've got with the look at how fast we were given this stuff. So whether you believe uh, the the deals with was it Hoover that were made closed door between the the beings that they came into contact with in the fifties, where they negotiated a trade between technology and human Is it lives. Eisenhower wasn't it? Eisenhower, yes, that's right. Yeah. So so if we are to believe that that's true, and again, based on everything we know outside of that, that would make absolute sense. At some point in time, some kind of contact needed to be made between that realm and this realm and the the that's that's where the coming into agreement would have taken place between man and darkness right at least for our generation for our for the people that are alive right now and during that process technology was given to them in exchange for human lives how else do you explain the millions upon millions of missing men women and children every single year unaccounted for like completely mm -hmm. unaccounted for that again goes back hand in hand with all of the sacrifices that we see taking place in scripture especially in the old testament to all of these pagan gods so like all of it ties in together and when you look at it from that perspective look at what they've done technologically between the 60s and now we're only right. talking about 60 years dude that's not a long time yeah and i go ahead shane sorry man um I was just going to say, so with, with something Aaron said a while ago, it really um, um, just gave me an idea. So if we, not saying that we are in a simulation, but if we are, it's most likely that it happened a long, long time ago. Correct. Because if we're finding advanced hard drives and ancient quantum computers, they could have they could have put man under a simulation 2000 years ago or somewhere about that time. We, we wouldn't know it. We wouldn't know it, especially if it was, you know, a, a super advanced simulation ran by some type of super advanced quantum computer. Here's something I've always thought about the mark of the beast, that the reason the people can't repent or turn back from it is it maybe it put them into some sort of simulation that they were never coming back from. I, I don't know, and I I hope that's not what we're in. The, like the descendants of people. You I know don't what think I mean? that choice or, has come yet. What you're talking about, I don't. Yeah. I know. I I actually agree with what you just said, and I know what you're saying. I don't think we've been given quite that opportunity yet. I think we're on the precipice of an opportunity for people to join that kind of a simulation and have full knowledge of what they're joining. I, I'm yeah. even careful now accepting licensing agreements from video game companies. I went to go try a new game the other day. Cause I've always been a gamer 
I went to go try a new game the other day and I was reading through the stuff and there was some verbiage in it. I actually might make a clip about it. There was some verbiage in it that was so unsettling to my spirit that I just uninstalled the game. I did not accept it. So like for all we know, they're going to entrap us in one of these EULAs on Facebook or on Instagram or on one of these services where we accept it and we think that we're just accepting like a contract to be able to use their software, but it's way deeper than that. Like mm -hmm. I, I just, yeah, we're on the if, same page. If we're not, and I, I don't think we are, I hope we're not. Um, <laughs> uh, if we're not in a simulation, there is a day coming. I think the way technology is advancing to where, like you said, people will be given the choice, the option to go like uh, what's that movie? Or they were practically living and working in a simulation um, where that boy was living in that little camper oh, there's a thing. Lot of them. Ready Player One? Yeah, Ready Player One. I think that day is not far from us where people will willingly go and live in like a virtual reality mm -hmm. and yeah. escape this one. Um, not that that has anything to do with the Mark of the Beast, but I think that is a way to just enslave us. But, um, Think yeah, that willingly days. imprison us because people will choose that. They'll yeah. say, "Oh, life's a struggle. I got nothing else. You're offering me a, a seven foot by seven foot room with a bed and a monitor and a headset. I can play all day, <laughs> and I don't have to pay you anything because my payment is my data. I'm in. You can't yeah, tell yeah. me that. I would say the majority of the Earth right now would think that's a sweet deal. They would. Mm -hmm. It's a, especially the youth. Our mm -hmm. youth. Oh my gosh, dude. There's they're, yeah, I mean, that younger generation is in a lot of trouble because they're already, their whole life is virtual video games and technology, and they spend all day like this, you know? I mean, even a lot of adults do, but it's scary, dude. It's scary where technology is taking us. It is. And how fast. Yeah, so, and I want to I wanna just add something real quick. Before, yeah, please. Oh, just hold that thought. So just to be for... <clears throat> the voice of the skeptic that may be listening, because I know that we're talking about a lot of technological advances and stuff. And so the skeptic may say, okay, so you're talking about how uh, the technology and the processors that they found and the quantum computers and how all this technology was fed by fallen angels. And even our mm -hmm. technology today has advanced so quickly. So, how does the advancement of technology equal we're in a simulation if that if that makes sense for the for the skeptic sure it's it's not that simple but it can't it can't like that, that statement nobody could make that statement right right like right. i could never sit here and say that the advancement of technology proves a simulation i but what i can say is that the tech the advancement of technology definitely creates an additional puzzle piece that fits into what I'm saying and, and, and hear me out. So if, if we really are in the year 2024, like we're actually, not. we're not, we both know that, but like, <laughs> yeah, we're not. but like, so, so let's just say for argument's sake, I'll just throw a random number out there, like 1024 instead. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, let's just say we're in 1024, just an arbitrary number. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then that's at least a thousand and twenty four years since the death of Jesus, right? Like if if we're again, if we're assuming that it's ten twenty four. So that being said, if technology has done what it's done in the last sixty years, and we know if we agree yeah. that that technology came from the fallen. Yes. Is it the wisest to think that our generation is the only generation to have ever been given this technology and no. that we're the only ones that have ever gone from point A to point B where we're at right now with the technology? I think I personally think it would be foolish to think that we're the only ones. Right. Or we're the first ones. So what's being done is they're testing the same thing out with every single generation of people, right? Mm -hmm. They're 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 leading them through the same the same path. They're taking them down the same path. They might change it here and there, right? They might change a little bit about this or a little bit about that. Like, uh, you know, two hundred years ago, who knows what the version of Coca Cola was? But there probably was one, right? And it probably wasn't called Coca Cola. It was probably called something completely different. 
And 200 mm. years before that, there was probably another one. It might have even had a very similar logo and a very similar whatever. Like, like what, I'm, what I'm really trying to do by saying all of this stuff is just get people to think beyond what they have been thinking in terms of like a, just a coming into agreement with the fact that we are the most advanced we have ever been. And no one before us has ever had this kind of technology and this kind of understanding. I think that unequivocally, we can say that that is not the case. I agree. So when you look at it like that, right? And so when you look at it like that and you look at the fact that they did have quantum computers back then to run simulations and do all of this stuff, we still don't even know the extent of what AI can fully do. That's right. And some, and some people would say AI is demons. And I would say like, kind of it is like kind of sort of like i mean i i could see how how eventually they will just straight up enchant certain things and use them as vessels to put demons in and and yeah. it it will it will look and seem no different than ai but we've got to get there right we're not yeah. there yet they're they're slow walking us through that pasture right now and and they're they're letting us play with all the tools like little children baby blocks in a nursery they're letting us play with all the ai tools so that we can get wowed and and all the stuff dude all they're doing is walking us through a process of what they've already predetermined before they just boom start using actual demons and and in certain things in certain people in certain technology whatever the case is like i just i think that that's inevitable and so what i'm trying to say is ultimately what I'm talking about again is patterns. I'm talking about things that happen in cycles, things yeah. that happen in cycles. Like, and you know, you see people now, how many people are filming the sky and seeing a grid? How many people are, are looking at the star and the moon? Shane's and, seen that. I've so seen he so, sent me so, some pictures. I'm like, dude, that's a, that's a grid. What, what is that? So again, yeah. like we're talking about different puzzle pieces from different people from different areas of life that all actually fit together if you give them the chance to. So you've got these patterns that are being shown. You've got these. And I think that there is just a life cycle um, in terms of like how long we're allowed to be fooled before we're given options and given choices. And, you know, I hate using the word collective, but like it is safe to say that as many people are out there being NPCs and absolute morons in terms of like how they think and how they act, there are many people like us having these deeper conversations and, and thinking about the possibilities and seeing things for what they really are. And I think that the more we get closer to the Holy Spirit, and the more that we stand on his promises and the deeper that our faith gets, whether we're in a simulation or not, because ultimately, ultimately that's, that's, I guess that's the end part of my speculation is that ultimately it literally doesn't matter if we are or not. Yeah. True. <laughs> like it literally doesn't matter. Like it's the same thing as the short season. Like that might matter a little more because it makes more sense of things, but ultimately dude, nothing that we've discussed tonight, removes jesus from the throne and right. nothing that we've discussed tonight changes the power of the holy spirit nothing that we've discussed tonight changes that path and what we must do and the surrender involved the dedication involved and just the glory of god dude nothing nothing changes any of that it's just it's just a it's just a thought experiment of trying to piece all of the things together and try to trying to figure out why why we are where we are at this particular time in history at this moment with the current developments that we've got. And, you know, I, I just think if we remove ourselves from the things, we start to see the patterns in literally everything, like literally everything. <clears throat> and, and I would even go as far as to say that like there are patterns taking place in people's lives that they're not even aware of. And what I mean by that is like just the simple fact of like my username tuning your heart, when you tune your heart to the frequency of Jesus and to the things that are righteous and to the things that are pure and the things that are holy, like everything around you changes. Am I wrong? No, you're not. Everything no, you're not wrong. around you changes. People stop talking to you. People stop texting you. People you've never even had to have a conversation with. You never even had to have a sit down with them and say, yo, I'm not the same guy anymore. I don't, I don't do that anymore. I don't talk about that. Anymore. 
there was no conversation needed. You, you tuned your heart to the Holy Spirit. You started living your life the right way. They just fell off the way that they were always meant to because they don't. Your, Amen. your hearts don't merge anymore. You're not yeah. on the same frequency anymore. It repels those frequencies and there's no conversation to be had. And so like everything around you, you know, it's kind of like a, a husband or a wife, you know, it's 2024. So we see this happening both ways, but someone in the household getting radically saved and literally just loving that household in a different manner. And then inevitably in time, everyone else wants that. Everyone else wants to, to share that. And, and, and inevitably after so long of somebody showing that level of love of Jesus to everybody, everyone around them ends up wanting to share that love of Jesus. That's just, that's just the way it works. If you stick with it and you persevere, otherwise those people fall away from you. It's one or the other. They either become that way and want to become like Jesus or they fall away from you. Just like, just like a spinning, whatever, dude, take anything and spin it around. And the, the, the wind is going to push things away from it. Right. Like the, the sound might deter people or animals. Like it, it's, it's all, it's so easy to make it sound new agey, dude, but like, it's undeniable. This stuff is undeniable. So I just, I think w when you look at it from a pattern perspective and you look at the fact that like the stuff that they show us and introduce us to, right? Like the, the, the multiverse, for instance, the multiverse would make sense if there were thousands of servers set up all running the same simulation at the same time. Right. Yeah. Like hmm. that, that, mentality would make sense because i don't believe that we're a galaxy the way people think we're a galaxy and that there's another galaxy just like us and then there's another galaxy just like us and we're all floating out there in space like the three of us have we've come too far in our understanding of like the realm that we live in and the firmament that's that we're beneath and all of the things and the promises in the bible like we've come too far in our understanding of that of that to buy into the multiverse in the way they're explaining it to us. Right. Yeah. But it would make sense based on my theory. Yeah. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, I wanted yeah. to I'm say, not saying it's true. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to say one more thing and then we'll close out and you can have some final comments and thoughts. But one thing real quick that I had thought about this whole simulation thing, because even if uh, like us, ourselves aren't like this computer program if everything the possibility <clears throat> that possibly everything around us is and and what i'm getting at is i just thought about the the movie the hunger games and i think it's the second one and it has the main guy and and it's just like everything's a computer he has everything and he's he's creating the stage for them but it's it's all a simulation like nothing's real but yet they they put a thing in the tree and water comes out and they're drinking it you know what i'm saying or or like like just things like that like that they they put in the movies and stuff like the people are real but the reality around them it it's like computer generated and there's ultimately that guy on the outside that's creating their reality and he could spin them around and mess them all up like it, like he did in the movie. And mm -hmm. ultimately even like you said, the grid in the sky and uh, you Ever. know, cat, uh, I forget her first name, Everdeen like shoots Katniss. a Katniss Everdeen. She shoots an arrow up in the sky. It hits, it. it hits it and it, it busts out the whole, simulation that yeah. that they were living in but in that simulation people can die by these uh computer generated bugs and all kinds of stuff they can drown by water poison and because all that. of their belief yeah their mind that makes real. it real correct yeah yeah so this ties right into like how much power does the enemy have right he's mm. really only got the power that we give him in our lives and like yeah. the darkness feeds off of that energy. Why do, why do they say to not let certain animals know in the, in the wild that you're scared? And what does that look nope. like? How do you tell someone, oh, just if you don't want to let them know you're scared, what does that mean? Like, so I need to change my face. I need to change. I need to have a smile. But like, meanwhile, I'm terrified in my heart. 
dude, our heart gives off an electromagnetic pulse and it can shoot between six and 10 feet. When you're scared, it doesn't matter what you say or what you look like. That animal already knows. The right. demons yeah. also already know. That's how they know who is scared and who is standing on the authority of Jesus. It's not simply because you say a name. It's because when you say the name, your heart knows for a fact Jesus is real. And so again, my name, it's, there's, it's, a, it's pretty deep, dude. Like, because when you fully actually believe something and you stand on that truth, it changes your reality. I don't yeah. care what anyone says. It's just like what you're talking about. And it would also make sense that in those movies, like they gave that guy power to control the things within, um, and within that simulation or whatever we're going to call it. It would make sense that the enemy would give some humans a certain level of power of our reality. So mm. some of them probably do have the access to flip some switches and turn some knobs and make things that we would perceive as magic that we would perceive is totally not even possible, but really it's just a bunch of ones and zeros when it's all said and done. <laughs> and they're doing it and we're seeing it as real and we're believing it as real. And dude, the three of us already know we've gone down enough avenues to understand that the only way out of being afraid of some of that stuff is standing in the promises of Jesus and being filled with the Holy Spirit. And yeah. that's the reason why they don't want people finding Jesus. And I'm just <clears> going to do one last tie in really quick. And then I'm going to stop talking for, night, for the night in the matrix. Do you remember when, um, whatever the guy's name is, he makes a deal with agent Smith. Yes. And he's sitting there and he's eating his steak and he says, I know it's not real, but the way that it tastes when it hits my tongue and this and that, and all these other things, dude, all that really is, is, this little thing is whether we're calling it programmed or created it's got a certain code or frequency when it touches the tongue it validates that and then it sends the signal from the tongue to the brain that what you're tasting tastes like this or tastes like that like it's not even that complicated of a process like we don't even really know for all we know green isn't really green we could be absolutely hmm. fooled. We could all be thinking green is what we perceive as green, but it's really not. Like, how do we know? But the, the thing that I think that is the most awesome about that movie is they reveal that side of things. They reveal the matrix side of things and all of that. But my takeaway from all of that is that really, whether it's a simulation or not, we know at the very least it's one giant test. <laughs> we know that at the very least, there are the artificial things of this world and there are the promises that are eternal. And when you look at like Neo from that perspective, forget about his character and how awesome he is and all the things that he does. There's a moment in that movie where they're shooting all of those bullets at him. And in real time, they're seeing like him glitch out, but in his reality, everything just slows down and he does that back backwards thing and he's like doing this and he's dodging all of the bullets mm -hmm. tell me that's not exactly how it feels when you're walking in the truth of the holy spirit in real time and a demonic attack comes your way and you're able to see it for what it is in real time and the enemy thinks he's got you fooled but you see it for exactly what it is in such a way that you're able to pray against it and overcome it and it doesn't it doesn't hurt you it doesn't it doesn't it does nothing to you you've exposed it and so it's harmless against you because you're standing in the truth and the authority of Jesus. I think ultimately that's what that, that's what that is portraying. Like they may not say that they may not like, but I think that like when you step into the fullness of, of Jesus and the Holy spirit and what he really did for us and what he really is for us, <clears throat> like to a certain extent, it's not us. It's not our own power. It's all him. But when we've surrendered it all to him and we become that willing vessel and we allow him to work through us, I know there's moments in my life, especially lately, dude, he's doing some crazy things lately in my heart and a lot of my friends' hearts that are on a different level than anything I've ever experienced in my entire life. The blessings are in real time. The, the spiritual attacks are in real time. Um, they're more than ever. Like Everything's happening so fast these days. And I'm able to lately... I've just had this intimacy and closeness with him where I'm seeing these attacks for exactly what they are, whether it's somebody coming out of my past from nowhere to hit me up and talk to me, um, or whether it's something that happens when I go to the grocery store 
like in whatever capacity. And it feels like Neo dodging all of those bullets in, in real time. That's what it feels like because the yeah. enemy is trying to attack over and over and over and over. And because I've choose, chosen to surrender myself to him, I'm able to avoid all of those things. So again, it, it's, this is one of the reasons I stopped talking about conspiracy stuff on my page at all, because at the end of the day, this whole conversation was amazing and it was, it was incredible and I loved Absolutely. it. It's going to maybe pique some interest, but it also doesn't even matter. <laughs> like yeah. at the end of the yeah. day, I hope this conversation brings people closer to Jesus. Cause that's really all that matters. Amen. And everything we spoke about just testifies to the truth of Jesus and the power of Jesus. But at the end of the day, dude, I took all of the long roads and all of the hard paths to come to the conclusion that we really just need that childlike faith in him. Absolutely. That's all we really need to do is rest in his arms and let him take over. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And like what Couldn't you said, like more. all of this, you know, it does, it matters a little bit, but not a whole lot. And, and just to piggyback off that, you know, this, this world, this physical three dimensional world that, <clears throat> that we live in, ultimately is all going to perish and as a lot of christians have heard and said before like there's a world that's a lot more real than this one absolutely that after we pass from this life into the next and so that would even i mean does that even give cre uh, credit to like a, a simulation because this isn't actually real life what's real life is the life that's going to be after this life you know what i'm saying that's exactly right man that's yeah. exactly right so simulation or not we know that this isn't it yeah 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 so absolutely I, I, that's that's the takeaway for me and that's the conclusion that i finally arrived at also with that thought process is it doesn't change it's just it's just fun for for nerds to talk about you know yeah. the what ifs and <laughs> yeah. the the inner workings, but, it, but again, it also makes sense of a lot of things that like, because we've been collecting all this knowledge for however long and a lot of it clicks, right? And like, you can't pick and choose when it clicks. You hear something or you find something out and you're like, oh, yeah, it clicks for you in a different way. But at the end of the day, you know, it's just one more thing to kind of throw some puzzle pieces at and see if they stick. So yeah. hopefully this ministers to somebody. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. You got any final thoughts, Shane? Uh, just like um, kind of to elaborate on what you said, this this life ain't it. The best is yet to come. And like Aaron said earlier, this is all really just one big test, whether it's real or a simulation. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's all one big test. Mm -hmm. And the best is yet to come. If you've, if you've placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, the best is yet to, is yet to come for you. Yep. This life is hard and it, it sucks sometimes, Dude. but it's harder and harder. It seems. Yeah. But eternity with, with God himself, man, can't even imagine. I right. look forward to that day though. But, um, so Aaron, can finally rest. Aaron, great, final, yeah. Final thoughts, Aaron. I think I've said more than my uh, share of thoughts. So I appreciate righty. everybody listening to me, Gab. <laughs> yeah, and I we appreciate you coming onto the show, and we're definitely gonna have to have you back on, buddy. Yeah, and absolutely. like we always tell our listeners, guys, remember to question the narrative, and God bless you all.